So this is Mike O'Grady with Legislative Council. As you remember, 863 was about amending the requirements for remittance of the unclaimed beverage container deposits, also known as the sheets, um, changing the, or eliminating really the requirement that the beverage manufacturer or distributor, that's the initial deposit initiator, maintain a separate interest bearing account and deposit into that account every deposit collected within three business days of collecting the deposit. Constructive interest bearing account requirement and with no account <coughs> requirement, you don't need the three day provision. But the Department of Taxes wants to collect based on their model for collecting sales use and alcohol taxes. Um, which requires a <coughs> reporting and remittance by a certain day of the month. So you will see on page 19, lines 10 through 13, that the report that the initial deposit initiator makes is made to the Secretary of Natural Resources and the Commissioner of Taxes beginning January 1, 2020. It's submitted on or before the 25th day of the calendar month succeeding the quarter ending on the last day of March, June, September, and December of each year. Then on page 20, that report is linked to the remittance. So on page 20, line 9 and 10, on or before January 1, 2020, and quarterly thereafter, at the time a report is filed. So the quarterly requirement. Each deposit initiator shall remit to the Commissioner of Taxes any banded beverage container deposits from the preceding quarter. Um, so, okay. So then uh, on page um, 21, there was a request by the one of the beverage uh, associations to clarify the language about reimbursement by the commissioner when the beverage uh, manufacturer distributor has paid out more in deposits than they collected. So reimbursement paid by the commissioner to the deposit initiator shall not exceed the amount paid by the deposit initiator under subdivision one. Um, less amounts paid to the initiator pursuant to the subdivision in the previous four quarterly filings. So they wanted to reference the previous four quarterly filings instead of the 12-month period. Does that work for you? So in a, let's call it quarter five, someone says, uh, we have now paid out more right. than we received right. and so from customers. They can't get reimbursed more than they paid in the previous four quarterly fines. So they're drawing on their balance that we accrued for right. prior quarters. They don't get to a windfall um, effectively. What was the windfall? Well, if they hadn't paid in as much as they are requesting okay. back in reimbursement. Um, can't leave the system in right. that deficit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So on page 21, line 17, going on to page 22, there are three new subdivisions added. These all relate to the Department of Taxes' ability to enforce, collect, and hear disputes <coughs> regarding their enforcement and collection. So page 21, line 17, uh, all administrative provisions of 32 VSA chapter 151, which is the Department of Taxes Enforcement Authority, including those related to collection, enforcement, interest, and penalty charges shall apply to the remittance of the abandoned beverage container deposits. Page 22, a deposit initiator has the ability to request a hearing. Um, from the Commissioner in Taxes for a determination on a notice of deficiency, a partial denial of a request for a date of an assessment. The hearing is subject to the APA requirements for contested case hearings. Within 30 days after a determination, a green deposit initiator may appeal to the Commissioner of Taxes, appeal determination by the Commissioner of Taxes to Washington Superior Court or the Superior Court of the County in which they are located. 
and then notwithstanding any appeal upon finding that a deposit initiator has failed to remit the full amount, the Commissioner of Taxes may treat any refund payment owed by the Commissioner to a deposit <coughs> initiator as if it were a payment received and may apply the payments in accordance with 32 VSA 31. Well, so if somebody's got an income tax refund and they haven't paid their uh, sheets, the commissioner can maybe treat that refund as a payment of the sheets. It's kind of like the offset language that they have. All right. Page 22, line 20 E, the language about confidential business information of sales data remains the same. <laughs> what is new is on page 23, going on to page 24. As I think most of you know, A&R has a default enforcement chapter and a, def a default appeals chapter. And that enforcement chapter says that they get to enforce any provision of 10 VSA Chapter 53 relating to beverage containers. But you just gave the Department of Taxes the ability to enforce the sheets requirements. So you have to accept from a and R's authority that provision, so those provisions you're giving to DOT, the Department of Taxes. So a and R gets to take enforcement action under 10 VSA Chapter 53 related to beverage containers provided that the Secretary may not take action to enforce the provisions of Section 1530 that are enforceable by the Commissioner of Taxes. <laughs> Same type of language, page 23, on appeals, except that those acts or decisions of the Commissioner of Taxes under Section 1530 are not appealable underneath the a and our default appeals section. You're not going to be appealing this determination by the Commissioner of Taxes to the Environmental Court. The Environmental Court judges probably want nothing to do with that. I think you're right on that. So basically, although by default, a and would normally have enforcement. Right. In this case, because it's really a tax issue. It's about collection of money. Right. Okay. So one other change that I will note, and, and Luke has the rest, um, and that after passage, the title of the bill is an act relating to weatherization, building labeling, and benchmarking of public utility commission proceeding and unclaimed beverage container device. Nice. Very cool. Rolls off the tongue. Right, kudos to the other authors for taking the book. Um, thank you. So there, uh, question pause while you're still here. Um, there was some discussion before you came in the room around the uh, refund uh, requesting a refund petition. So, Stephanie, do you want to say something about <coughs> this or question it? Uh, yes. Yes. Um, I would. On page 21, line four and five. Um, there's a sentence, the reimbursement shall be calculated based on the previous four quarterly filings. Um, and I agree with everything that Mr. O'Grady just said this does, um, but I, in that every quarter, if there's over-redemption, if we take more bottles in than we give deposits, um, we can apply for this refund. And I agree in subdivision B, lines 12 through 16, that you look back um, in the previous four quarterly filings to make sure that a depositor isn't getting the windfall that he discussed. What I think is confusing and different is the sentence that said in, in lines four and five that says the reimbursement shall be calculated based on the previous four quarterly filings. Because I think when you're in the quarter and you're looking at whether there's over redemption, you should just be looking in that quarter. and. And only do you look back for the previous <coughs> four quarterly filings when you're looking at the full year period. And so I'm wondering if lines, words, that sentence needs to be struck. That you're saying the reimbursement amount is calculated for the quarter that they're in. Mm -hmm. the, what your, the test is against how the funders were the previous four quarters. Exactly. Thank you. I think that's. I think that that's a good point. Okay. Um, I would just ask if the Department of Taxes agrees with that. I sent an email to Douglas. 
I think with the language on page 21, lines 12 through 16, you, you basically achieved the, the intent of that language on lines four and five. Our goal, my understanding, I'm fairly careful from the private taxes, is that we want to make sure that we are not looking back in that same quarter. We don't want it, we don't want somebody coming to us and saying, oh, this quarter is mm -hmm. one we sent you to it, because that's kind of an administrative nightmare. You want to make sure it goes back to the PC. That's my understanding of that. But the language that says the reimbursement shall be calculated based on the reimbursement is based on their sort of net balance in the current quarter, right? Whether they're eligible for a reimbursement. I understand the issue is calculating the amount to be reimbursed with a current quarter bit of math. The eligibility to get it is measured against what would be written in the previous four or five. So then it would seem as though if you struck the sentence, you would, that would solve the sure. issue. Sure. Okay. So the committee find that that is a way of resolving it. Take out the reimbursement mm -hmm. shall be based on the previous four quarterly filings. Okay. Of Okay. So, with that, knowing that we'll have that um, edge coming back to us, uh, one, one, two, or something like that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. I'm very much. Um, we'll move to the chief address. Uh, at the point. What's that? Absolutely. Is an internal thing. Oh. Okay. Um, Thank you. And, Mr. Martin, will you be able to make that change? Yes. Great. So we'll be And I think we're asking you to make walk us through is there any change to the pages one through seventeen that weren't in what we had what we finished up with yesterday? Right. We're not looking for I mean we're just looking for changes, right? Right. But there's a change since our You don't want to go over it again? <laughs> Come on. There's a change since person uh thirty seven thousand. <laughs> Good morning, Luke Meyer from Legislative Council. And answer your question, nothing substantive. There are what we call reader assistances. Those are those three um, asterisks and then the words and another three asterisks that you have no legal significance that really meant to divide up this bill, which is very different parts to it. So the reader can say, oh, all right, we're talking about weatherization. A couple of those were added in. One or two typos. There was a plural and she was singular. There's no substantive changes right. to uh, what used to be an S-171. This <coughs> pages one through 18, sections one through seven is the same language we looked at yesterday in that combined document. Great. So the version that we'll have that sentence that we just looked at struck. Um, just so we can go down something and we get a new draft number on it. I don't know what that would be. Do you want me to tell you that would be? Or you, yeah. you know, you want to vote now pending that change? <coughs> so it would be draft number, let's call it 2.1, which would be at the upper left hand corner. It'd still be version one in the lower right hand corner.
Yes. 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 Yes.